Okay, this is um, a Dr. J. Lorraine. She has three woe dreams I want to share. Hi, welcome back. This is Juanita, your sister in the Messiah. And I want to come with a word of encouragement and word of warning. I saw three woes this week after prayer. And uh, a woe is an expression um, of distress and sorrow or deep suffering due to a calamity or a judgment that uh, has befallen or will befall a people or a community. So on February 24th, after intercessory prayer, I saw two... Um, morning visions uh, or dreams and they were back to back and the first one was I saw a a billow I couldn't think of the word because it wasn't like a tsunami and it wasn't like a flood but it was as if the ocean the water from the ocean billowed into this bowl and rolled ashore um, and it was rolling so fast that usually when you see a flood, the water will rise slowly or quickly and push up against a building. But this ball were, uh, went through doorways as, as if it had a mind. And I remember uh, telling the people that was in that house, hurry up, you got to leave out the back door, go out the back door. So I saw a straight a straight shot, like a shotgun uh, house from the front door to the back door. That was the first one. The second one, uh, this happened on the West Coast. And there were a lot of people out enjoying the beach. Uh, partying, drinking, listening to their music, dancing. They were having a good time. And um, there were two women, one black and one white. They didn't know each other. But they noticed this mist coming from the ocean. It was uh, far away. But they saw it, and both of them were alarmed and noticed that each other had saw this um uh, this sight coming and it frightened them. And I got the impression that the black woman was visiting California and didn't know anybody. So the white lady took her hand and started running. And she ran to this home. And she knew this uh, person who appeared to be a very wealthy white man and asked could they take refuge at his place. Um, he said, yes, but I guess after so long, other people started coming in, taking refuge there too. And I noticed that the sliding glass doors were open to, toward the ocean and you could see the mist come right into that home. And the mist turned into... A man you could tell that he was a mist but you can tell that he was a man and whatever he was saying I, I wasn't privy to hear uh, what he was saying however those in the vision that did hear it was completely captivated and mesmerized by this guy what I found peculiar was there was a man a human who this mist took the appearance of. So I'm looking at a man and then I'm looking at another man that just looked like it was formed out of mist. Um, ask the father, uh, what is that? If you all, if anybody uh, are having dreams about floods and literally that to me was the same dream. Now, um, there is 
Isaiah. Isaiah 59 and 19. That says that. This is talking about a calamity. Um, he's telling the righteous, I'm going to go up to 17. He's telling the righteous, for he put on his uh, righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for his clothing. And he was clad with the zeal and a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. To the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of Yahuwah from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahuwah shall lift up a standard against him. That word standard means a way of escape. Now, in this passage, we hear a warning to the wicked, an encouragement to the righteous that he will uh, rescue, that he is salvation for those that's walking upright uh, before the Father. Now, uh, the mist, there is... Three times the word mist is used. Once in Genesis, when a mist came up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. If you notice that uh, Yahuwah did not cause that mist every time in the beginning of creation when he uh, called forth something, it said, God said. So that mist is representative of darkness. Acts 13, 11 says that, and behold, the hand of Yahuwah is upon thee, and you, this is King James, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season, and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead his hand. And 2 Peter 2, 17 it said, these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Um, in these passages, it is distinguishing the righteous from the wicked. Now, some of us that are righteous are yet wicked. And I am encouraging right, you right now to repent and turn from all wickedness and iniquity. It is not going to serve you in the end. He is a holy Elohim. And only the pure in heart will get a chance to see him. Uh, we are in the time of sorrow. And he is preparing us. This, I had these visions after uh, the week of February the 16th. Now, February the 16th, 78% of the United States was under snow. The South had more snow than, than I remember in almost uh, 20 years. Water issues. Uh, Texas, please pray for those uh, that are in Texas. Um, are still suffering. We just, I live in Memphis. We just came off of a boil water. Uh, we were on uh, low reserves for water, low pressure. Now on the 25th of February, I saw a dragon. I don't ever want to see anything like that again. 
the head was humongous. Um, the, the body was almost the color of a teal green. And he had, um, my first thought, it looked like aluminum foil, except it was very fluid. It was a silverish color. And uh, after I got the glimpse of that, I covered my face uh, not to look upon it and uh, declared, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. But I could feel the weight and the heft of it as it moved past me. Uh, and I could, even with my eyes closed, I could still see this uh, ribbon, this river, this this silver thing going along the side of his body. And it took a very, very long time for him to pass and for it to pass. And I didn't realize until that evening what I saw in the scripture uh, came to me, which was uh, Revelation 12 and 15. I'm going to start at 14. And to the woman, were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away in the flood and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast forth out of his mouth. Um, that word flood there, um, I'm going to do an interlinear and look up that word so we can understand what it means about um, causing her to be carried away of the flood. Not causing. My computer is doing some things. Okay. All right. So that would be forty two sixteen. Uh means to be overwhelmed uh by a stream. So this is a continuous uh assault that is meant to overwhelm you. We have to prepare for the revealing, the apocalypse, the word apocalypse means to, to be revealed. And little by little, um, the woes are coming. They have come by air, this this plague that is being called a pandemic um the pestilence with the animals plague is all the same word biblically it is a plague or a pestilence and um by land the calamities with the weather not just in the united states it is a lot of countries uh that's having these unprecedented blizzards and snowstorms and floods and this has been going on and it is getting um more intense and increasing by number um the un has said that 2021 it will be a famine of bib worldwide famine of biblical proportions 
some of us know that we're in the end of days. Some are ignoring it. But I encourage you to prepare for the worst while praying for the best. I know many uh, of believers believe that Yah will take care of them. And he will. But you have to determine, are you going to wait for him in comfort or in famine, in lack and in distress? Because he's coming. He is salvation. But if you have been warned that calamity is coming, and you know that it is, and you prepare not, then your discomfort will be on your head. So I am encouraging you, the least thing for you to do is get plenty of water while you can. Um, for a week here in Memphis, it was hard to find water, very hard. Even as far as Holly Springs, Mississippi was out of water. And this is just a prelude uh, a type and foreshadow of things to come. I, I, I pray that they don't. But according to the word, every time there is pestilence, there is famine. And there is the wrath of the serpent. And then there is the judgment of Yahuwah that's coming upon the earth. That is really between a rock and a hard place. So walk in righteousness. Repent while you still can. And prepare for the unveiling of what is to come. Peace and blessings. Until the next time. What an awesome word. I will definitely post her YouTube channel link. That was Dr. J. Lorraine. Um, interestingly enough, her video, um, the word, so many of it was echoed on this channel. So much of it was. And uh, one thing in particular, the very last video, I don't know if you guys saw it or not, but just in case you did not, and if you have, I'm sure you heard that, um, a storm is coming. A great storm is coming. Father Yah is saying, prepare. I was just telling you guys, I feel like it may be because it's sooner, it's closer upon us. We know these contractions are definitely becoming more intense, um, definitely deeper and longer contractions. So the birthing pains are definitely increasing. Until next time, I love you all. Be blessed. Look up our Redemption Draws 9.